Yeah. So, Toby, you run this company, McReber, and um, I guess the exciting thing to me is that you have found a way to reuse plastic, which normally gets thrown into landfills, ends up in oceans. Um, you found a way to repurpose it to make our roads better. Can you explain that to me? Our roads uh, contains 90% aggregates, so the stone, um, and then the glue that mixes it all, that sticks the stone together is called bitumen. Bitumen comes from an oil-based uh, product. Um, it's the it's the, the rubbishy part of the oil that's then used as bitumen to go in as the glue in the mix. Bitumen's made from hydrocarbons, and all of our plastics in, in all that we have um, are also made from hydrocarbons. So it's an oil-based product. Uh, for any plastics that we have were, were made from oil. What we're able to do is take, um, and we only deal with waste plastics, so that they're the plastics that nobody has any use for. They, they're just destined for landfill or uh, incineration in, in many cases. So if you can take a, a bottle and recycle it into another bottle, then we're not interested in those ones. It's the packaging and the, um, you know, some, some bottles and the one-time use plastic bag, those kind of plastics that cause a real problem because we don't have anywhere left really to store them or to put them. A plastic is a great product. It lasts for a long, long time. What we're able to do is, is use the, the quality of plastics to go into a road to replace part of that glue, to replace part of that bitumen. So we're basically replacing hydrocarbons with other hydrocarbons. Um, and we've just worked out a way to mix various different waste plastics together in, in the form of pellets. So these are some of our pellets here that, um, that go in to replace um, the equivalent weight of bitumen in any asphalt mix, whatever the, the road design is, to do various different things to roads. So some of our products, like this one here, uh, this makes a road stronger, so it increases its tensile strength. And then on the other side, we've got um, pellets that we put in that make a road more elastic. So in places like Canada or, or where I am in, in Scotland, where we have a lot of very cold conditions, um, what happens is we get a lot of rain, the, the water is stored in tiny little air pockets in the asphalt, and uh, as it freezes, it, as we know the science, it obviously expands, and as it expands, it forms cracks in the road. And we often see potholes where there's any cracks. Uh, one of our pellets gives a particular sort of flexibility to the road. And um, it stops it from cracking and therefore reduces the potholes. So we're using various different polymers to create different results in various different roads. That's really interesting. So how did you get this idea? Um, well, it really started because I, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of an uh, idealist, I suppose. And I was, um, I was at my little girl's school assembly. Uh, my little girl was uh, six at the time. She, her school assembly, so she was performing at this assembly and the parents were invited in to see what the kids were performing on. And um, this particular assembly, though, was based around what lives in our oceans. So the teacher had asked the kids to do a little bit of research before the assembly to, to work out, well, what does live in our oceans? My little girl and myself, we'd done a little bit of research out there on, on Google, and we got along to it, the assembly. And uh, I remember the teacher, she stood in front of the group and she said to the kids, so kids, what lives in our oceans? And one little girl put a hand up and she said, fish, miss, they live in our oceans. Another little boy, I think he said whales and dolphins. And my little girl, so when she put her hand up and when she was asked what lives in our oceans, she said, plastics. And the teacher kind of took a step back, really. And I think was she was a little shocked. I don't think it was quite the result that she was she was looking for from the project. Um, but actually, the research that my, my little girl and uh, put in was... Um, that by the time she's my age, so I'm, I'm 40, by the time she's my age, it's expected that there'll be, well, more plastics in our oceans than fish themselves. And I had one of those moments, I just thought, I'd like to do something about that. Um, I, I, want to, I want to change that way. I, I don't want my little girls growing up in a world where actually that is the case. And, and the way we're going, our generation, the, the way that we're, we, we, we keep just producing all of this plastic and um, most, well, a lot of it ends up in our oceans. Um, it's, uh, there's for every one minute that goes by, uh, there's a rubbish truck filled full of plastic that dumps its plastic into our oceans. That's the equivalent to how much plastic there is in our oceans. So I thought, well, I'd like to do something about it. 
On the other side, where I live in, in Scotland, our road quality is getting worse and worse. And it's not just Scotland, it's, uh, it's England and it's Wales and then it's Canada and it's, and it's, uh, here. it's, it's everywhere, you know. So I had been lucky enough, I'd been out in India. I remembered that they also have a pothole problem, just like uh, we all do. But their pothole problems are sort of worse maybe than ours because they, they ride around. Other people I know, they, they have a bike or they have a trike or a tuk-tuk or a, you know, some sort of small vehicle. Um, and when those things hit a pothole, it can be the difference really for them between life and death. Um, and what they were doing is they were going to landfill sites and they were using um, there's a group of people they call pickers, and a picker's job is to pick out various different items from our rubbish dumps, our landfill sites. And they were collecting them all in a bag, all of this rubbish, sticking it into a pothole. They poured diesel all over it. They lit it. And all the stuff was melting down to kind of form a, a seal in the hole. And I thought, that's what I'll do in Dumfries and Galloway. Now, our councils are perhaps different from those in India, and they kind of frown upon us setting light to things that we put in potholes. So I had to think again, and I, I, I just kind of came up with this idea that maybe there is a use of, of rubbish in potholes, of plastics in particular. Um, so I got together with a couple of mates. One happened to be an engineer, works in construction, and the other worked for the council in, and um, he was head of waste um, for the Dumfries and Galloway Council. So I chose my mates wisely, and um, I said, "Listen, I've got this crazy idea. What do you think?" And uh, Nick Burnett, he said, um, "He's the burr in Macreba." He said, "Well, I'll get you some waste from the council." And uh, Gordon Reed, he's the re in Macreba. He said, "Well." You know, I know a little bit about roads. I, I go and dig them up and then I have to fill them back in. So between the three of us, we spent 18 months of, of just trials and tests and probably five or six hundred different mixes that we sent through of various different polymers just didn't work. And then we got the, the breakthrough with our, our first product we called MR6. Um, it's called MR6 because we have between the three of us, we have six daughters. Um, so that was uh, that was it. <laughs> it seems like one of those ideas that once you hear it, you're like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> no, we still say that today. You know, how is it that nobody else thought of this? It was just, um, it seems so simple now, but it, it was maybe so simple that, you know, people just, it, they didn't put two and two together. I, I think that the difference for us, where we just thought, well, let's give it a go. You know, we've got absolutely nothing to lose. We, you know, we didn't, we didn't go into this because we thought, we want to you know, have this worldwide business. We went into it because we wanted to help resolve the, the we call it the plastic epidemic. Um, that's where we're all coming from. So it's, um, we had very little experience in, in roads or plastics, polymers. Um, we, we've had to learn as we go, but it's, uh, yeah, it, we, I guess a lot of luck involved in there. I love but, your TED talk. I've, I've watched it and I really urge our viewers to go watch it because you stress this what if question. You basically, yeah were just hounded by this question, what if, and that kept you from getting stuck on all the places that most people would get stuck with, oh, well, someone must have already thought of it, you know, this can't work. You just kept going, what if it could work? Yeah, that's it. It's um, despite all of that skepticism, and they kept telling us this will never work, this won't fly, you know, no one's, I, I think that the thing that scared them was it, 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 from the off, really, because we were dealing with two you know, there's there's two things people speak about in in Scotland where I live. They they, they talk about the poor quality of roads, um, and they talk about the problems that we've got with plastics. It's it, so we just hit it at the right time. As you point out on your website, um, there's 20 million tons of asphalt that are produced annually in the UK, and if yeah. all of those roads were to use your product, you would be saving 60,000 tons of plastic from landfills, and that's just in the UK. Yeah, but, but here's the problem with that, right? So if we were able to put our mixes into every ton of asphalt that they do produce here in the UK, it's just it's 20 million tons, we would only resolve 10% of the plastic problem that our local authorities in the UK have. Wow. So we are such a small part to play in what is a massive, on a bigger scale than any disease that we've we've ever had mm -hmm. um it's such a massive global problem you know we, we are absolutely not against plastics plastics are great they, they do all sorts for us 
most of what we're all sitting on, you know, what we go to bed on, um, what we wear around our glasses, it's all plastic and it's useful and it's good. The problems are these one-time use plastics and, um, and, and what to do with them once we finished with them. Yeah, I mean, right here in our own little town here in Massachusetts, we finally just passed a plastic bag ban, but it took years and many people were still against it. And it's because we've gotten so used to the convenience of a bag that you're going to use for 12 minutes and then throw away. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was a kid, we used to use paper bags. And so and, and now we've got new technology. You know, there's a, a, a particular polymer, a plastic is called PLA. And PLA can be formed it, it, to look at it, to feel it. Um, this is a, a PLA bottle. Um, so if once this were to hit landfill, it's got about a month before it degrades. Wow. Whereas a, a normal plastic bottle that you might buy a, a cold drink in, that, that would last you know, 50, 70, maybe even 100 years before it starts to degrade. Um, and the problems that we've got is if you take it, any plastic bottle, that's not just one polymer. So within a plastic bottle, the lid is a different plastic to the bottle itself, which is a different plastic to the wrap which is a different plastic to the little ring pull thing. So the challenge is for recycling is how you've got to separate all of that out before you then make a new bottle. How do you get your waste plastics? Do you um, buy them from a, you know, a recycling MRF or do you have to separate them yourself? Like, cause you already mentioned that there are like say PET water bottles, which can be reused into another water bottle. Um, and yeah. you're looking for basically the things like plastic bags and things that really don't have a use. Yeah, yeah. So it's those, those one-time use plastics, um, those, well, any plastics that are destined for landfill. Um, so in some cases, uh, we take some of our waste from commercial waste, uh, industrial waste. Uh, some of it comes from household waste. So it's um, sometimes uh, we, we have a, a landfill tax bill. Oh, you have that all over the world. So we can go to some of our commercial companies that have waste plastics. They're sending them off to landfill. Well, we, we can be paid to take those away. So we reduce that landfill tax. In other cases, we can take some of the waste plastics away from our councils, our local authorities, household waste, some of the things that can't be recycled. So we've got various different streams of this waste that's that's out there. And, you know, since China shut their door uh, on taking any of our waste plastics, there's more stock, if you're more source for us um, than ever before. Um, and the cost of plastics has, has dropped because of, because of that. I've got an asphalt plant right in my own town. If I were to approach them, um, they probably haven't heard of your product, I'm guessing, because you're in the right. UK, maybe. But, you know, if I talked to them and showed them your, your website and stuff, do you think that it would be possible for, for American asphalt companies to start using your product? Yeah, our product, um, so we have, uh, we set up subsidiaries um, all over the world. We're, we're now in um, Bahrain and, and uh, Saudi, over in um, Dubai and um, uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, and also over in Australia, um, just about to get our first road down in, in June, actually, in Canada. And, and we do have a, a, a potential partner set up in the States, but we, we haven't yet got any roads down and done any testing. So it's important to us that we, we always, um, when we get our products over, that we, we have it made just in small batches, first of all, and we do the tests that we need to do to, to make sure it meets the standards that, that you guys have over in the States. That's the stage we're at at the moment. So we're just waiting now for to find an asphalt manufacturer to make the products so that we can then do the testing that meets the standards. So absolutely, it could be it could be there now. That's great. Wow, this is exciting. So, I mean, our viewers should be contacting their local asphalt plants and councils and seeing if they can possibly use your product because it sounds like it, it's a direct replacement and it doesn't require their machines to be changed or anything like that. It sounds like a win-win, basically. The roads last longer um, yeah. and you emit less greenhouse gases. That's right. Yeah, for and every cheaper. Ton, for every ton of bitumen that we replace with our products, we save a ton of carbon emissions. Wow. So again, there's massive incentives there from the, uh, from the asphalt manufacturer's perspective and obviously from the council's perspective. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, what we, what we do with our subsidiaries is for the first year until we get the, 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 the bigger orders, um, we send over our products. So it's uh, Britain's waste that goes into the roads. 
But once we get established, it's then we like to, as best as possible, use local waste for local roads. Um, so we set up our manufacturing over there. So we, we get the, uh, the plastics coming in and we separate them all and we pelletize them with our various different mixes. Um, and it's all, all local waste for local roads. So that's, that's what it's got to be. Wow, this is so exciting talking to you. I'm, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and our viewers today. I hope that our viewers out there will go watch your TED Talk and will go check out your website and really take the time to contact their local asphalt plants and councils and say, hey, take a look at this product because it has so many benefits. Thank you, yes, we'd love to, love to see you soon. Awesome, thank you so much, Toby. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Cheers.